Love makes people do crazy things. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 villainous couples on TV. Can I eat him now, love? For this list, we're taking a look at TV's evilest, nastiest, and most conniving couples. However, we'll be excluding animated couples because they deserve a list of their own. Consider yourself warned. Spoilers lie ahead. And life will go on. You should be the hand of the king. That's a known I could do without. Number 10. Blair Waldorf and Chuck Bass, Gossip Girl These two lovebirds got up to more dastardly deeds in a single season than most villains achieve in an entire series run. All I ever did was love you. Blair Waldorf and Chuck Bass may have wound up living happily ever after, but that was only after years spent deceiving their friends, their family, and half the city of New York, usually for their own selfish gain. In fact, I hate you. I've never hated anyone more. Every nerve ending in my body is electrified by hatred. There is a fiery pit of hate burning inside me, ready to explode. However, Chuck and Blair's wrath was not limited to the Upper East Side. They often turned on each other, using sex, lies, and jealousy to gain the upper hand in the relationship. That being said, Chuck and Blair were never more frightening than when acting as a team, and we feel sorry for anyone unlucky enough to have been caught in their vengeful crosshairs. Do you take Chuck to be your lawfully wedded husband? One more, three letters, yes. Then by the power vested in me by the great state of New York, I now pronounce you man and wife, you may kiss the bride. Number 9. Lord Zed and Rita Repulsa, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers I am Lord Zed, Emperor of all I see. You have failed to complete the mission assigned to you. I will now resume command. Prepare the past for my return! Now this is what we'd call a power couple. Prior to becoming an item, Lord Zed and Rita Repulsa were bitter enemies. In Season 2, Lord Zed, angered by Rita's inability to defeat the Power Rangers, locked her inside of a space dumpster. Rita responded in kind, drugging Zed with a love potion in order to manipulate him. Do you, Lord Zed, master of all evil, take Rita Repulsa to be your bride? <laughs> well, I do. In a surprise twist, however, Lord Zed wound up falling in love with Rita Repulsa for real. From that point on, the two villains were a team, hell-bent on taking over the Earth and destroying the Power Rangers. Sadly for them, it was not to be. Excuse me! A moment! I'll be right back! Sweetheart! Number 8. The Countess and Ramona Royale American Horror Story – Hotel We have a hard time deciding when these two were at their most deadly, together or apart. She taught me I could be a lady and badass. There was nothing I couldn't be. The Countess, also known as Elizabeth, met Ramona Royale in the late 70s, and the two quickly became an item. Together, they'd engage in all manner of sexy and deadly deeds, turning others into vampires and looking hella fine as they did it. Of course, if you feel this burden's too much to bear. No. Despite their obvious chemistry, things hit a snag in the 90s when Ramona fell in love with and subsequently afflicted someone else. The Countess uh, didn't take it well, murdering Prophet Moses and his friends. From that point on, this villainous couple was at odds, leading to plenty of death and destruction. She must have really loved you. American Horror Story isn't short on evil couples, but the Countess and Ramona are right at the top of the list. Number 7. Fred and Serena Joy Waterford – The Handmaid's Tale On the surface, Fred and Serena Joy Waterford could not be more different. Fred appears kind, with a willingness to bend Gilead's strict rules to suit his needs. Serena, on the other hand, is cold and calculating. Maybe they weren't here. Well, they were. However, beneath the contrasting facades are two monsters cut from the same cloth, who brutalize others regularly and without remorse. You may be transferred to the jurisdiction of the International Criminal Court. Wait, wait. You have been charged with war crimes, human rights violations. While their storyline has changed dramatically in recent seasons, one mustn't forget the horror of the ceremony, or that Fred raped Offred to punish her, and that Serena has been physically abusive. These two deserve each other. Miss Waterford? Do you need anything? No. Number 6. Dexter Morgan and Hannah McKay Dexter 
Part of a wave of television anti-heroes that cropped up in the 2000s, Dexter Morgan is far from perfect. But his shortcoming is he doesn't have much of a human brain. He means well, but torturing and killing serial killers is still wrong. And when your kill count is over 100, it's clear that you're taking pleasure in your work. Hannah McKay, on the other hand, is far more utilitarian and indiscriminate about murder. And I think that Dexter could be a whole lot happier if he knew that you and I could find some common ground. These two killers hooked up towards the end of the series, but that was more than enough time for them to engage in some truly heinous acts together. While one could argue that Dexter was never on the same level as Hannah, he kept going back to her despite their philosophical differences. This makes him culpable and thus a villain. Well, no one's looking for a woman traveling with her husband and child. I'm thinking the three of us could leave together. Number 5. Badiatis and Lucretia Spartacus these two Roman citizens are status-obsessed social climbers of the worst kind. Darling, you must spend coins to receive coins. My husband told me that. Badiatis and Lucretia are motivated by power and will do anything to make sure they have it. This includes, but is not limited to, sedition, manipulation, intimidation, rape, and the big one, murder. One day soon, we will give Alithia a lesson in manners, but for now, necessity dictates we give her. Crixus. Make the arrangements. They love to flaunt their wealth and status in front of their enemies and underlings, getting off on the jealousy it produces. Both characters ultimately meet a grisly end, and most viewers were okay with that. But nothing me. With a litany of sins under their togas, Badiatis and Lucretia were an obvious choice for this list. Number 4. Joe Goldberg and Love Quinn You. Of all the villainous couples on our list, these two are arguably the most compatible. Hello, you? Season two of You saw Joe Goldberg starting fresh on the West Coast. He quickly falls in love with and subsequently obsesses over, in only the way he can, Love Quinn. However, as the season progresses, it becomes apparent that Love has no intention of being a victim. In fact, she's just as evil as Joe. Where's Candace? What happened? I took care of it. The two final episodes reveal the depths of both characters' depravity, as they team up in order to clear their tracks and start a life together. Imprisonment? Deception? Murder? Pfft, that's a Sunday afternoon for these two psychotic lovebirds. Joe? No! Please! Please no, I'm pregnant! Number 3. Spike and Drusilla, Buffy the Vampire Slayer Season 2 of Buffy introduced the titular Vampire Slayer to two of her most iconic adversaries, Spike and Drusilla. This one has power. I could feel it from the outside. The couple wasted little time instituting their unique brand of evil upon the town of Sunnydale, using torture and murder to solidify their place amongst the show's best antagonists. While they occasionally come across as sympathetic, what with Drusilla's own history of having been tortured and manipulated, they're not to be underestimated, let alone trifled with. Oh no, my pet. This is just the beginning. Sure, Spike wound up joining the Scooby Gang, but it wasn't exactly an overnight decision. Drusilla and Spike were formidable opponents for Buffy and Co., proving extremely difficult to eradicate. My angel's too smart to face the judge again. What's Big Blue up to anyway? He just sits there. Number 2. Angelus and Darla Angel These two have a history that goes back hundreds of years, with Darla having sired Angelus in the 18th century. Look at you. I don't know what you are anymore. Oh, you know what I am. You made me, Darla. I'm Angelus. In the years leading to the present day, the two tortured, raped, and murdered their way across Europe. In their bid to toy with vampire hunter Daniel Holtz, they raped his wife, turned his daughter into a vampire, and killed his infant son. So yeah, volumes of villainous stuff. Angelus and Darla can also be quite nasty to each other, leaving the other behind to die in order to save their own skin. People are going to die. And yet somehow, I just can't seem to care. While Darla is the clear-cut villain in the present day, what with Angelus becoming Angel in order to better himself, these two will always have the memories of their shared dark history. Don't fight it, my love. It's not it happen. Before we unveil our number one most despicable couple, here are some honorable mentions. We gotta go. It's oatmeal on the stove. Mm. 
Love you. There is no reason that can possibly convince me that you should have sabotaged a peace plan we spent months on. It was a political mistake. But there's a trick to being human. You have to think only about yourself. That's why it was so astonishing when I decided to go to my hallway closet and retrieve a revolver that had never been used. You're not gonna offer to buy every painting in here so I can close up early? The guy actually tried that once. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Cersei and Jaime Lannister – Game of Thrones Right from episode 1, it was made clear that Cersei and Jaime would do anything to protect their forbidden love. The things I do for love. <laughs> Jaime's good deeds notwithstanding, one cannot deny that he has buckets of blood on his hands, from pushing Bran out of a tower window to strangling his cousin in a prison cell. Cersei, meanwhile, was one of the show's primary antagonists for the entirety of its run, murdering and manipulating as she saw fit. Your father trained us for whether he knew it or not. He knew it. Maybe memorize every damn city, town, lake, forest, and mountain. It's ours now, we just have to take it. Their love serving as the driving force behind their various crimes, Cersei and Jaime often drew the ire of fans for their inability to see beyond their own interests. Despite their wildly different character arcs, it was only right that these two ultimately died in each other's arms. Nothing else matters. <laughs> Nothing else matters. Only us. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.